You're listening to the number one real estate podcast where number we talk one. number one, number one. Where we talk with real estate agents and uh, people in the real estate industry about their wins, losses, lessons, stories to help you win in your local market today. My name is Cody May from Sheridan Street. I'm joined with my co-host Vikram Diol and co-founder of the Real Estate Growth Academy. I am joined today with Vikram and with my main man Justin Sauter. What is up, gentlemen? Hey, so I excited to be here. I can't Justin. imagine a more fun group to hang out with. This is like oh, killer. Like yeah. I'm Jack, you guys. I'm Jack. We, we have 24 minutes, you guys, and three and a half days worth of content to put in it. So, so I'm going to jump right into it. Um, Justin is a great friend. He's actually been on all of our podcasts before. Um, we've been on his podcast. Um, he's an amazing entrepreneur. Um, Justin, uh, can I just can we just jump right into it, bro? Let's do it, buddy. Let's just let's just cut to it. Yeah, that's rapid fire. Okay, that's rapid fire questions here. How should agents in a shifting market be generating leads? I believe in a shifting market, people are more distrusting of what they're hearing. The media is telling them all kinds of stuff. They believe that agents uh, are 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 only telling them what's benefiting them. So I believe in a shifting market, you've got to go back to the fundamentals of getting warm business. Whether you warm it up through a long series of conversations, as I know you guys do a, an amazing job with, or whether you tap into warm referral streams. it's I think the days of, of, of converting just simply cold, people are more distrusting than ever. They need advisors. They need experts. They need somebody who can really, they can trust to give them good advice that's in their best interest. Yeah. So let's tap into that. What what is a warm referral source? What, what does that mean? Like, can you unpack that real quick? A couple of bullet points of what yeah. that is. I'll share with you what most people think. And then I'll share with you what I believe is one of the biggest missed opportunities in our industry. So okay. what most people think when they think of warm market, they think of friends, family, neighbors, uh, like past clients, right? They, they think of the people who they have relationships with, which is totally natural, right? You think, okay, warm. If it's going to be warm, that means I have to know them. Totally understandably. That's what I believe is probably the first opportunity where people are getting off. I actually created a diagnostic tool that allows people to assess based on how many people are in your database, meaning warm market database, how many referrals you should be giving on a given year and what it's costing you to not to not be capitalizing on those referrals. So that's something simple. Would love to give the audience access to that. What should that number be? So yeah. let's say let's say somebody has a hundred leads um, that are warm, right? Friends, family, neighbors, yeah. previous clients. They got a hundred in this system. How many referrals should they be getting a year? On average, a database okay. well-nurtured should convert at 10%. So in other words, uh, about half of those will be direct pieces of business. People will need you. The other half on average will be people from that warm database that refer you to somebody. But yeah. 10 pieces of business should come from that group. So 100 people equals 10, right? So That's here's the catch, right? And this will kind of lead into my it's second nine, conversation. It's nine deals more than most real estate agents do every year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and here's what happens oftentimes is that people recognize like, okay, I want to work by referral, right? Like, I, like by Even referral only. Like these are things that we've heard of. Oh, by yeah. the way, I'm never too busy for referrals. Like we've heard that. You've got right. agents, however, they're trapped. Because they realize that like, okay, I did 10 deals or 20 deals last year and I want to do 10 more deals. And it's like, if, if they really understood the math, that means that they've got to add 100 new relationships to their life. And I'm going to ask you like, how many more relationships can we all handle? Is, is, is there room for 100, right? Now, if it's a cold interaction, sure, we all have time for that. But to actually nurture a relationship of trust where people are looking to you as their advisor, that takes a lot more time. And most people have yeah. less time than that, right? Yeah. Well, how do you nurture a relationship like that? Like, you know, we talk about your, we've talked about your upstream model before, and I'm really curious to know how an agent adds more relationships or how they nurture the current relationships. And is there a right or wrong answer? Should they be going after a hundred new relationships or should they be like looking at finding ways to nurture the relationships they currently have? I think that diagnostic tool that we've created will give people an idea of whether or not they've statistically tapped out that database or not, right? There comes a point where if you have a hundred people in your database and you're getting 10 deals, it like there's like, the amount of value they're going to get from that moving forward is not going to be 
equal or a good return based on the amount of effort you've got to put into getting that. Yeah. So if, if, if you're at 10%, yeah. Yeah. grow your database, grow your database. That's the next step, right? It's yeah. not about trying to squeeze more out of the term. It's actually actually going and getting more people to be friends yeah. with, right? To create relationships with. So, there, there, so what you're saying is in Vikram languages, there's a diminishing return if you don't continuously add to your database because people only know so many people that are buying and selling real estate and remind and and remember you, even if you're doing a great job nurturing them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the reality is the average consumer is not thinking about real estate all day long. Like we are thinking. No one's waking up thinking how they can refer you more business. No, that's crazy. I thought everybody was thinking only about Vikram and his wigs on Instagram all day long. I thought everyone was thinking about that too. I, I, I think Cody has dreams about me his wig. I don't I would, know if they're dreams or nightmares. I wouldn't go that far. So you holding an eggplant was actually more scary than any of that. Yeah, but yeah exactly. The, 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 eggplant, the, the eggplant was more scary than the wig. I agree. Go, go to my Instagram story. You'll see a peach. Yeah. <laughs> so well, let me ask you a question. Cause you said that what most people think is friends, families, neighbors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, what do you, what is your definition of a warm lead? Yeah. Well, I believe it's it's the it's similar. However, how we go about adding to that database, right? And this is where the big opportunity I believe a lot of agents are missing out on. Here is the it, arbitrage. Yeah, like the time that it takes to develop these new relationships to get them to know you, like you, trust you, right? Which is the three criteria that people always say that's what it takes to get somebody to use you. That just takes time, right? What I've uncovered and what I teach agents is that there is a way to actually tap into the relationships of other business owners, right? There are other business owners out there who happen to be in neighboring industries and those neighboring industries all day long, different than the average consumer are having consultative conversations with their clients, call it insurance agents, probate attorneys, uh, lenders, property managers, financial advisors, CPAs, like the list goes on and on. They're, they're already, they already, have a relationship in which people know them, like them, and trust them. And now what happens is that when you properly approach those professionals, those professionals transfer those that those years of trust to you in one conversation. So instead of you having to go create 100 new relationships to close 10 deals, you Whoa. can go create one new relationship to close 10 deals. What, what would be the... F- because like we hear that all the time, like, you know, in Tron, like our mutual mentor talks about how there's now business, there's a referral business, there's pipeline business. You kind of need a mixture of all three in order to make, you know, in order to effectively build a business. And, but the, like we get the referral business so wrong, like we mentioned earlier around the fact that it's like, it for the most part is just in time business, but it can be now business through the cultivating of the relationship, but what does a real estate e- agent in their local market even say? How do they not sound like, like a dick? <laughs> like, and, you know, going to an insurance agent, like, cause I hear this all the time. I hear it in like, I hear it in lab code agents. I hear it in uh, different uh, communities where it's like, it's like you go to the mortgage, all the, the only thing the mortgage broker wants is you to refer them the, you know, the real estate deal, but the, like the real estate agent, doesn't have a great relationship with the mortgage agent. How do they cultivate these relationships without being seen as like kind of like needy? I guess you could say. So this is a a five step process that I that I teach, and it's it goes not against, but it's different than what you would say to your friends and your family members and past clients. Because what oftentimes happens is the why and the reason why most agents never unlock the power of these what I call upstream partnerships. In other words, professionals that are upstream from a real estate transaction. The reason why is because they take what they've been taught, the way that they've been taught to talk to their friends, family, past clients, and they go directly to a business owner and they say those things. They'll say, for example, oh, by the way, I'm never too busy for your referrals. And you know, it may work with your friends and family. I've got nothing against that, right? It's been proven that it works. However, this business professional does not know you. They don't, like, it doesn't work. Like the They're not. Sorry, I'm never too busy for your referral. I'm like, what is that? Like, what does that mean? That's the, the, the curious thing is like, what does that mean? <laughs> and I think I think what the, the the problem with that is it's just it's it could be the right model for the right audience. It's just not the right model for this audience, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that a business owner isn't that's not his biggest concern is wondering if you're too busy for him. Like his concern is his clients. Yep. Her concern is is her her business. 
Right. And so the approach cannot be showing up with your hand out, even in a friendly way, saying, I'm never too busy to get something from you. The approach has to be you. First and foremost, you have to identify that the professional that you're approaching actually produces the kind of clients that you want to serve, whether it be first time home buyers, whether it be move up buyers, whether it be people who are selling their final home. Depending upon who you want to serve, you can reverse engineer and find the professional who already has hundreds of these relationships and is in consultative conversations with them daily, right? So first step is to identify, make sure you have the right person, right? The, the, the right professional. Next is to seek a warm introduction to that professional. Because if you walk in and say, here's my cards, here's my brochure, here's all the initials behind my name, and here's why I'm better than the, like, than the next agent, they're like, like a friendly, get out of my office, right? Like I'm not, in, like this is not helpful. Bro. Good. That was so good. Yeah. That was so good. Yeah. So, so let, 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 can I, I, I want to slow you down and unpack this a little bit for our audience. First thing you need to do is you need to have an avatar. Yeah. Right. You need to yeah. know who your ideal client is. Right. Yeah. Then the second thing you need to do is find out who has your audience. Okay. Yeah. First thing, avatar, who is your ideal client? Right. First time home buyers, final home buyers, sellers, whatever it is. Right. Because everybody says, I serve everybody. I'm like, if you serve everybody, you serve no, nobody. Like I talked to somebody yesterday. He's like, I was driving for six hours. I'm like, well, how many houses did you have? He's like, no, I had to drive two and a half hours to show a house. And then I had to drive all the way back. And it was tra I'm like, you drove two and a half hours? I'm like, I don't drive two and a half hours in a week. Like, that's insane. Know your avatar, right? Second thing is know the avatar of the professional service agents or the professionals that own the business that serve those avatars. Third, you need a warm intro, which means you need to know somebody who knows that person and you need to build the relationship with that person to get the introduction into that person's world. Because here's what people don't understand. And Justin, if I'm stepping on the wrong toes, let me know. Just because somebody knows you doesn't mean that they trust you. Like I might have a beer with you, but I'm not going to necessarily go out and give you my money. And a referral relationship, right? An introduction is me putting myself out on the line saying, hey, this person is vetted by me. They're solid. They're good. They're legit. You don't need to vet them, which means that you have to have trust with that person, right? Like it's not just a warm body, right? It's not, it, it's, it, it's an actual relationship that you have with that person where they know you're going to take care of their friends, yeah. clients as well. That's so right. it's, it's a whole like it's a whole thought process that goes into it. Is that correct? That's that's so well said, Vic. And, and here's a key: is that you actually need to coach this person on how to introduce you, because they might say, "Hey, this is my friend. He's a real estate agent. Like like we use him. He's good, right?" That that puts you in a class of commodity. Everybody is that, right? That's nothing unique. And the 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 critical part was step number two by getting the right introduction is it alleviates from you having to pitch yourself when you meet with them, which is step three. You don't need to pitch yourself. Someone else has already done it for you. So that when you meet with them, you're not meeting as a vendor there to talk about yourself. You're yeah. there to talk about them and their business. It's it's peer to peer. It's I'm a business owner. So are you. Let's have a business conversation. Tell me about your business. Tell me about your goals. Tell me about your plans. Tell me about what's working, what's not working. Now, all of a sudden, the guard goes down. They don't feel like you're pitching there to get something. And genuinely, you are there to give. You're looking for something that is missing in their business, something that they need next. So that step four, you can circle back after the fact. And you can say, I've been thinking about our conversation, about what you said, what you're working on this year. I have somebody that you should meet, I think would be beneficial. Are you okay if I make that intro? Right now, all of a sudden, you showed up differently in their life because you were introduced. You showed up differently in the meeting because you didn't talk about yourself. Right. And then you showed up differently afterwards because you're following up adding value to their business. Now, when you do that right, it leads to step five, which is where all the magic happens, is where you look for an opportunity to add value to their clients. So, wow. for example, every time, let's say that, uh, Cody, you're an insurance agent and you know every time you're, like, you're meeting with your clients that you're looking to be sure that they're properly insured, right? And you also know that the client is maybe hesitant in that meeting that they're afraid you're just going to upsell them on more life insurance and so forth. You as, a, as an insurance advisor want to be able to come with the most amount of value possible. 
and you want to be able to ask relevant questions to them. And if a real estate agent were to have delivered to you some sort of value propositions, for example, a customized value report on that client's properties, you as a as an insurance agent would be able to perform at a much higher level for your clients. And in the process, I've now put myself in the middle of the conversation when you, Cody, the insurance agent, are uncovering the fact that they are going to be moving, that they're going to be buying an office building, whatever. Now, all of a sudden, you're the real estate agent that's in their mind on the paperwork in front of them that has spurred this whole conversation, allowing that insurance agent to be more valuable. So now the referrals start to flow because all the every day they're having these conversations and you've inserted yourself into those conversations by adding value to their clients through yeah. them. Let, let, let me slow down the model because Justin's on fire right now. I think he's had like three cups of yeah. caffeine, like straight <laughs> injected into his body. Um, you need a proper coaching introduction to the professional, yep. right? So you need a proper introduction. When you go into the meeting, you guys, you don't go in and talk about, oh, I'm the best real estate agent. I have the best service. Blah, blah, blah. No. When you go into the meeting, you talk about them you ask them questions, their goals, their life, their challenges, what's holding them back, what's working for them, what's not working for them. So you, you have a small script of questions, correct? Yeah. The next step is you look for a solution to something they told you that was a challenge for them. You then follow up with the solution or the introduction or whatever it is to help them. Mm -hmm. You are acting as an advisor, as a fiduciary at this point. The last step is you find a way to add some sort of value to their client's life, which may or may not have anything to do with your services, but it has everything to do with adding value to them. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. You nailed it, Vic. And wh what happens is that deliverable that you're offering to their clients isn't necessarily directly from you. You're making the, the, the upstream partner is your client at this point. You're yeah. trying to make them look good. You're trying to help them be more valuable. You're trying to help make their life easy. Because if you can do that, they're going to not refer you because they know you, like you, trust you, and want to thank you for giving them a referral, right? That's where referrals get super slow. Is it's yeah. like, oh, you gave me one. I probably better give them one. So yeah. we spend our time trying to figure out how to refer each other. Become yeah. a part of the solution to their clients and the and, and the referrals will start to flow. But, but Justin, 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 but but Justin, this, this isn't going to work for me in my market. This is, this is, this is, I mean, this sounds great for other people, but I need to make money now. So I need to ask for the referral now because I believe that most real estate agents will find the, they'll find the problem to every solution. Oh, they definitely will. So I, know that. I see this tremendous value here, but what about the agent that says, I need to eat tomorrow, Vikram? I don't have six months to build these relationships. I would encourage you, if you're in that spot, rewind and listen to the, to the five steps we just shared, because the traditional <laughs> model, the traditional model is I'm going to take them to lunch. I'm going to get them to know me, like me, trust me. And over time, they're going to want to help me because we're friends and because I've asked for it and I've stopped by and I've given trinkets at their office. That will take a long time. When you can insert yourself into their client experience today, these professionals are having conversations right freaking now, like now. Now yeah, and they need a real estate agent tomorrow. So, so the upstream I don't know model, so right? the upstream model is technique can be now business. It can be yes. it can be the conversation business. It can be like building a relationship with like you know a trusted advisor because they're already that trusted advisor. Yeah, hundred percent. So good. Like what else can you know? Like when we're talking about referrals and we're talking about you know building uh, relationships with different mar uh, markets. You you mentioned earlier there are some like obviously low hanging fruit like insurance agents. What like what are the top three advisors that you think every real estate agent in every single market should be literally stopping this recording right now and finding a way to go and meet with those well, people? Well, before you guys stop the recording, uh, we would like a five-star review. Yeah. Um, we'd, also, <laughs> we'd also like- We also guys, appreciate your referrals as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're, all, we're never too busy for a referral. Uh, no, we- before you guys stop this, uh, you should save this because this is so much value. So yeah. you should save this on whatever platform you're listening to. But um, I'm, I'm actually writing down who you think the top three people we should be talking to are. Okay, Super. very good. So the top three, the quickest that I have agents move towards. Number one is a lender. Now, not your typical lender, the, like the lender that is a 
consultant that has their own database, their own book of business, and they're currently nurturing that book of business, right? Not a transactional, but very much a relational lender. An insurance agent, number two, right? We kind of did a bit of a role play there on what that could look like. Insurance agents, ones that are at the top of their game, are having anywhere from 80 to 100 client conversations a month. And anywhere between 25 to 45% of those are something's coming up about real estate. You do the math. How many at-bats could come from one freaking relationship there? The third one is financial advisor. Financial advisors are in the know when people are making real estate moves. They're also regularly consulting with their clients, having annual reviews, taking a look at the entire wealth picture. All right. Well, last question, because I think it's super important. Um, should a real estate agent dedicate at least one day of prospecting to multiple lenders, multiple insurance, multiple financial advisors, because if they find the solution to one, wouldn't that solution probably fit into many of these people's problems? I believe that it's um, it's better to go deep than go wide because you need to add right. enough value to those professionals that they feel it and they can't think of life without you, right? So start with like one bucket. So I'm going to go after insurance agents or lenders with a book of business or financial advisors, get really educated on their market, what their challenges are, have a bunch of interviews with these types of people, and then come up with multiple solutions. So you can go deep with one category before adding multiple layers. I think it's okay to go with multiple categories, but I would encourage you that, for example, contacting 10 lenders to apply this strategy to, I think you'd be better off maybe interviewing 10 and choosing two and going deep with two lenders, yeah. right? Yeah. One that serves the higher end clients and one that serves the lower end clients. You have to be looking at it through the lens of wh- which of these would best serve my clients, right? Because there's going to be, just as we're asking them to integrate into our business, we want to integrate them into ours, right? Like vice versa, like both of them need to be integrating into each other. So you need to ask yourself, um, who are my clients most in need of so that we can offer a value exchange in return in which we're also integrating their value into our client experience. I want to wrap up with one final question because I know that you have to go in two minutes. And uh, I just, first off, I'm super, super grateful for oh. um, the fact that you took some time out of your day and like to, for us to kind of rapid fire uh, so much, so much value. Like this is a teaching moment. Like, so anyone listening back to the podcast, you need to rewind this and or write down the spot. Yeah. You need to write this down. Uh, I'm going to take his notes afterwards because it's so amazing. Um, if somebody were want to reach out to you, they're a real estate agent, they want to learn about the upstream model, they want to hire you, I want to give you an opportunity to plug yourself because you provided so much value. Yep. Uh, if they want to, want to work with you, where do they find you? Yeah, so my main website is a place um, where it's got a number of great resources. So, so think bigger, R-E, like real estate, think bigger, uh, is how you can find me. Uh, but I would say, most importantly, allow me to give some value to you. Go take this referral score, which yeah. is bit.ly forward slash referral score. Do that and I'll be able to tell you how much money is on the table from your database with a very clear series of steps of what you should focus on first in order to start to close that gap, including which upstream partners should be the first one in your sites. So go do that, make some money, and then hire Justin. <laughs> That's exactly what you need to do. Justin, bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you. We got one minute left. I want to say thank you, Victor, for asking some great questions. I want to thank you, Justin. And I want to thank you for tuning into another episode of the RE Agent Podcast, the number one, the number one, the number one podcast the number one. in the world. We'll see you soon.